Hello everyone, I'm, I'm Dr. Evi Gagnari and I'm the course director in the areas of general and mechanical engineering and today I'm going to give you a, a tour uh, in the mechanics lab. I hope you will enjoy it. This is an apparatus that um, is used uh, in order when we investigate um, the behaviour of beams. Our level 4 students are uh, running a lab so to record uh, deflections at different locations uh, in the beam and they can capture the different displacements uh, in different locations using specific extensometers as we can see here and then they compare the experimental results with some theoretical calculations based on the uh, theory that they have learned uh, in the class. This is also a lab based on beams uh, and beam analysis, but the students uh, investigate different aspects. Um, more specifically, we have um, a three-point bending test. That we apply uh, a load uh, at a specific point and the students need to calculate what we call bending moment in a beam. This is something that also linked with level four studies. The students have already heard uh, during lectures and tutorials the theory behind bending moments and uh, beam analysis and they are coming now in the lab uh, to apply this knowledge and compare experimental with theoretical results. This is an apparatus that is called, which is called thin cylinder. Um, this is used mainly from our level 5 engineering students, um, mechanical, aeronautical, uh, automotive engineering students. Um, the students learn about different um, type of stresses in different orientations, so after um, an analysis that they have uh, discussed with the module tutors uh, in the class about um, 2D analysis, 2D stress analysis, 2D stray analysis. Um, they come to the lab to apply this knowledge in a specific, using a specific application like this thin cylinder. Um, the students, through this uh, cylinder, they apply an internal pressure using this hand pump here. Uh, they apply gradually um, using small increments of 0.5 um, uh, megapascals and uh, they record uh, the strain at specific locations across uh, the cross-section of that cylinder. Um, how would they do that? Um, th they, there is a specific software that is used uh, and there are also some specific sensors that we have attached onto the cylinder to give, to, in order to help us to extract this information. Um, these are what we call strain gauges. This is a strain gauge rosette here that we see and there is um, we can see a figure as well of these specific uh, strain gauge positions uh, that the students capture uh, for every pressure increment that they apply into this cylinder. After that, the students, based on the theory that they have learned, they take the strain data from the lab, they convert it into stresses and they compare the theoretical with the experimental uh, results. This is another uh, equipment that is also based on beam analysis, but in that case, we have curved beams, so there are some different calculations and we can see that we, have, we need different devices to capture the, dis the displacement and the deflection at a specific point in this curved beam. So we need also vertical and horizontal um, uh, devices to, to capture these deformations. It's also used for either level 4 and level 5 students and it's based also on the theory that they have learned um, in the class. This is a, a, an apparatus that is called thick cylinder. It looks similar to the thin cylinder that I have described previously, but a thick cylinder is, behaves completely different compared to a thin cylinder if it is subjected to an internal pressure. This is a more advanced level uh, of study, so the students are dealing with this experiment at level six. Um, this is a particular, this is a cylinder where uh, it is cut in two halves and inside this common uh, section we have placed strain gauges as before but in different orientations and we can see the cross section of this common interface on that screen. The students uh, capture data from the 13 strain gauges placed at different orientations across the, um, the radius uh, of this cylinder. Similarly to what they do with the thin cylinder, they gradually apply internal pressure in increments of one megapascals and they capture strain values, they record the strain values for, from every strain gauge that 
uh, is attached to that uh, cross-section. And then they use some advanced analysis from theory, from, um, from the advanced stress analysis modules, um, especially for the particular experiment, uh, it's called LAME analysis. And they use their experimental data uh, and compare them with uh, some extensive mathematical calculations that they have done uh, in the class and during the tutorials. This is um, a tensile testing machine that our students also use uh, either as part of a module or um, as part of their projects. The specific one takes a maximum load of 20 kilonewtons, as we can see here. It can be used for conducting tensile experiments, tensile tests, uh, but also it is used for uh, three-point bending. And we can see a setup for a three-point bending here, where we have um, um, that base, we attach two rollers, supports, and uh, another point here where it is the point where we apply a load. So what the, the students are doing is that they take beams uh, made from different materials, mainly aluminum and brass. Uh, they place it uh, inside uh, between these two roller supports um, along that axis. Then gradually this uh, part is moving downwards and we apply a, point, uh, a load in the middle. Uh, the students then are able to capture the deflection at the midpoint and try to compare some um, theoretical calculations based on the deflection of beams and some particular method that we use at level 5 mainly uh, to calculate more advanced um, scenarios of deflections um, and they compare again uh, theory with uh, experiment. This is an apparatus where, our, where we use uh, if we want to conduct buckling experiments. Um, we place um, a thin beam like that uh, in between two supports. Uh, we have uh, the possibility to change the type of support that we use. In that case, uh, it's shown as fixed supports at both ends, but we can make them as pinned either at both ends or one pin and one fixed end. We place uh, a device so to measure the, as soon as we apply a load uh, at both sides, the beam buckles, bends in that direction. So we measure the, we do, yeah, use this device to measure the deflection of the beam. Um, this experiment is used mainly uh, from our level six students and our uh, MSc students as well. Um, the students learn about buckling analysis in the class they know how to solve a problem analytically, uh, but then they have the opportunity to, um, to, to use finite element analysis and the ANSYS software to conduct numerical simulations of that particular setup. So um, after they have learned how to analytically solve a problem like that, uh, they could model it in ANSYS and run a numerical simulation. They extract numerical results, and then they come to the lab produce that experiment uh, and they collect uh, experimental data. And then they compare experiment analytical calculations and numerical simulations altogether. What you see here is a dynamics experiment, mainly a vibration analysis experiment. Um, this is used from our, from our level six students uh, as part of the module vibration analysis. The students um, learn how to um, to, to solve uh, problems that are linked with two degrees of freedom or more than two degrees of freedom. So it's an advanced vibration analysis what they do. So they learn how, um, how the, uh, if you have two masses, for example, that are connected with uh, um, spring elements or any other stiffness elements, if the students um, come to the lab, uh, they have the opportunity to um, work on a two degree of freedom system like this one, where we have two masses, um, one blue and one, uh, one blue and one red, and we have connected them uh, with three springs, as you can see here. Um, we initiate the vibration by just removing the masses at the same direction, and then we release them. And we capture um, some data of the displacements and these appear as wave uh, data because the vibration analysis is uh, linked with sinusoidal functions. So by moving this in this direction, both masses, the students investigate what's going on when the both masses are 
are in phase, so they're moving back and forth in the same direction. And then they repeat the experiment by um, moving them in opposite directions. This is the out of phase scenario, and then we release the masses, and we see how differently uh, the system uh, behaves. This is um, another testing machine, uh, but it takes more load. It is up to 30 kilonewtons. Um, the students um, are using this uh, machine to conduct different experiments, tension or compression or even, strip or, or even bending uh, tests. Um, through very st standardized specimens, the students can uh, conduct simple tensile tests, for example, and they can extract mechanical properties of the materials like Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, uh, yield stress or ultimate stress. Um, and this comes as a, a nice graph of stress and strain um, in the results and they could extract easily the information from that graph. This is an electromechanics uh, machine. Um, our final year students are also using it uh, for their projects. Uh, and uh, we have uh, up to now students using it for uh, beams, let's say, uh, that not simple beams that are subject to bending, but for example, sandwich beams that are used in aer aeronautical industry. This is another test testing machine that we have. It takes more loads, about 100, uh, 100 kilonewtons, and this is a hydraulic one. Uh, this is very useful, especially when uh, we conduct fatigue um, analysis and fatigue testing. Hope that you enjoyed uh, the tour in this mechanics lab. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us or follow us uh, into our social media. Um, we are looking forward to meeting you.